Simbi met Ralia, who comes to see her at Kofi's house once in a while, and told her everything from how Kofi treated her to the king's proposal. Ralia saw this as a way out for Simbi. You should be with the king, Ralia said. He can give you a better life, one without fear or sadness. Simbi listened, her mind racing, life as a queen. Could it wipe away her mistakes, give her a new start? Once upon a time, in a faraway village, there lived a woman named Simbi. She was so beautiful, like morning sun shining over the village. Simbi was married to Gogo, a man who taps palm wine from the tallest trees. They had two daughters, as beautiful as their mother. People always talked. They said Simbi was too beautiful for Gogo. She deserves a chief or a rich merchant, not a palm wine tapper, they whispered. But Simbi, she didn't care about what people said. She loved Gogo, her husband, who worked hard every day, climbing tall trees to tap wine. Simbi had a friend, Ralia. They had been friends from when they were little girls. She often come and visit Simbi in her home. Ralia was beautiful too, but unlike Simbi, she was not married. She looked at Simbi's life, her home filled with laughter and love, and felt happy for her friend. But like others, Ralia sometimes wondered out loud, Simbi, you could have married anyone. Why go go? Simbi would just smile, her love for Gogo as deep as the roots of the palm trees he climbed. Their life was simple but full of joy. Gogo would return in the evening, his gourd full of fresh palm wine. Simbi would have a delicious meal waiting. Their daughters would play outside, their laughter mixing with the evening bird song, waiting for their father to come home. When Gogo came home, they ate together as a family. He would tell them stories of his day among the trees, the sounds of the forest and the sweetness of the wine he tapped. Then, they would all retire. Another day ended in contentment. Despite the whispers and the wandering eyes, Simbi knew she was where she belonged, with Gogo, her daughters, and their simple, beautiful life. She needed nothing more. The envy of her beauty by the village, Ralia's gentle probing, none of it mattered. Simbi was happy, truly happy, with her palm wine tapper and their life together. Then one hot season, something bad happened. Gogo's palm farm, where he got all the palm wine, caught a big fire. It burned down most of the trees. That farm was everything for them, where all their money came from. Now it was all ashes. But Gogo didn't fall down in spirit. He said, I'll build it all back. It'll take time, but we'll see our farm again. He started going around the village, borrowing little money here and there. He wanted to make sure Simbi and their daughters didn't go hungry. Gogo promised everyone, when my new trees grow, I'll pay back every coin. Simbi saw how hard things became. She saw Gogo leaving early, coming back late, his hands empty but his heart full of hope. She wanted to help too. So, she went to Ralia. My friend, Simi said, things are tough. Can you lend us some money just till Gogo's farm is back? Ralia, a good friend, gave Simbi the money. But she also said something. Simbi, how long are you going to continue living like this? Your husband Gogo is trying, but look at you. Look at your daughters. Simbi didn't want to hear this. She took the money, thanked Ralia, and went home, her heart heavy. But this was just the start. Simbi found herself going back to Ralia more and more. Sometimes for food, sometimes for money. Ralia always helped, but she always asked, Simbi, is this the life you want? Things were getting harder at Simbi's home. The days were long and the nights even longer, with worry filling them up. That's when Ralia, her friend, came up with a plan. There's a man, Kofi, rich and powerful, lives in the next village. He's seen you, Simbi. 
and he can't forget your face, Ralia told her. Simbi shook her head at first. I can't. I'm married to Gogo, she said. But Ralia kept talking. Just meet Kofi. No harm in talking. He wants to help you and he's got the means to do it. Simbi's heart was heavy. She thought of her daughters, their needs and how Gogo struggled. All right, she finally said. I'll meet him. And then, the following morning when Gogo had gone to check on what was left of his farm, Simbi went with Ralia to see this rich man, Kofi. Kofi's house was big, bigger than any house Simbi had ever seen. Kofi welcomed them with open arms and gave them food and drink. He listened to Simbi's story as he nodded along. Kofi promised to help, but his help came with a condition that weighed heavily on Simbi's heart. Help me feel happy, Simbi, and I'll give you anything you want in return, Kofi said. Simbi felt torn inside. This wasn't right, but her family was in need. With Ralia urging her on, Simbi agreed. Kofi was true to his word. He gave Simbi money, more money than she had ever held. But when she left his house, her heart was heavy. She felt like she had lost something precious. Back home, Simbi couldn't look Gogo in the eyes. She started to pull away from him and their daughters. Whenever they needed money, she went to Kofi and made him happy. Each visit, making her feel more and more distant from her family. Gogo noticed the change. Simbi, what's wrong? He asked. But Simbi couldn't tell him. She was trapped in a web of her own making. Her love for Gogo and their daughters began to fade, replaced by guilt and shame. Simbi's life had taken a turn she never imagined, all because she walked through temptation's door, thinking it was the only way out. But some doors, once opened, can never be closed again. And Simbi was about to find out just how true that was. Simbi's life was changing and not for the better. The money she got from Kofi made her feel independent, but it came with a heavy price. She started keeping secrets from Gogo, her heart filling up with guilt. Simbi would leave the house without telling anyone where she was going, coming back late, sometimes after the moon had climbed high in the sky. One evening, things came to a head. Gogo came back from his attempts to salvage what he could of his palm wine tapping expecting the warm glow of home the laughter of his daughters the smell of simbi's cooking instead he found his daughters alone their stomachs empty their eyes sad where's your mother he asked but they couldn't answer hours later simbi walked in the house was silent except for the sound of gogo's voice asking her where have you been simbi didn't answer she just moved past him, her heart heavy, her mind lost in thought. Gogo's worry turned to anger. The children were hungry, he said. Where were you? Simbi couldn't bring herself to look at her family. She felt trapped, torn between the life she had with Gogo and the promise of ease with Kofi. The strain grew with each passing day. Until one morning, Simbi made a choice that would forever alter the course of their lives. She decided to leave, convinced that a life with Kofi, filled with wealth and ease, would be better than the struggles she faced with Gogo, the poor palm wine tapper. So, with her friend, Ralia egging her, she packed her things and left, leaving behind the life she knew, the man who loved her, and the daughters who adored her. Simbi left her family, walking away from the love and hardship towards a future she thought would be brighter. But as she stepped into Kofi's world, she couldn't shake off the feeling that she had made a terrible mistake. The warmth of her family's love was replaced by a cold uncertainty. She had chosen a path that seemed paved with gold, but she would soon learn that all that glitters is not gold. And so... The unraveling of Simbi's life had begun. A thread pulled loose that would unravel everything she had ever known and loved. Simbi's new life with Kofi started like a dream. 
a big house, fine clothes, more food than she could ever eat. But soon the dream turned dark. Kofi, the man who promised her everything, showed his true face. He was not the kind man Simbi thought she knew. He was harsh, quick to anger. And soon, Simbi found herself trapped in a nightmare. Kofi's house, once a symbol of hope, became a prison. He controlled everything. Where Simbi went, what she did, even what she could say. If she spoke out of turn, Kofi's temper flared. The man who had promised to take care of her now only gave her pain and fear. Simbi missed Gogo, her daughters, their simple but happy life. She thought of them every day, her heart aching with regret. What have I done? She asked herself over and over. But there was no going back, not when Kofi watched her every move. Life with Kofi was hard for Simbi. Every day was the same, work, sadness, and Kofi's harsh words. But one day, something different happened. The king of the nearby village, a kind man loved by all, saw Simbi. He was out for his walk, like he always did when he saw her. Her beauty, even in her sadness, caught his eye. He walked over and talked to her. He had heard of her, but seeing her, he felt something stir in his heart. He offered her a chance to be his queen, thinking she wasn't tied to anyone since she was away from her home. Simbi was shocked. Marry the king? A part of her wanted to say yes, to escape the life she had with Kofi. But she told the king about Kofi, saying no to his proposal. She thought that was the end of it, but inside, her heart held onto a flicker of hope. Some days later, Simbi met Ralia, who comes to see her at Kofi's house once in a while, and told her everything from how Kofi treated her to the king's proposal. Ralia saw this as a way out for Simbi. You should be with the king, Ralia said. He can give you a better life, one without fear or sadness. Simbi listened, her mind racing, life as a queen. Could it wipe away her mistakes, give her a new start? After many talks, Simbi agreed. Ralia helped her plan how to leave Kofi without him knowing. It was risky, but Simbi decided she couldn't take it anymore. She had to get away for her sake, for her daughters. Planning her escape was dangerous. If Kofi found out, she didn't want to think about what he might do. But the thought of freedom gave her the courage she needed. It wasn't easy. Kofi's house was always guarded, the gates locked. So they waited for the right moment. When Kofi was away to a faraway village, Simbi, under the cover of darkness, she managed to slip away one night, leaving everything behind, the pain, the fear, the shadow of her former self. And then she went straight to the king and told him she was free from Kofi, ready to be his queen. The king welcomed her with open arms, and just like that, Simbi's life changed. She stepped into the palace, not as a guest, but as the future queen, her heart filled with a mix of fear, hope, and a desire for a fresh start. This was Simbi's chance, a door opened to a new path. She knew it wouldn't be easy, but the promise of a better tomorrow, of kindness and respect, was enough to light her way. She was ready to be a queen, to live a life she never imagined possible, all while carrying the lessons of her past with her. Simbi's life took a turn like she never dreamed. Married to the king, she lived in a palace, wore fine clothes and ate the best foods. Everyone treated her with respect. For a while, Simbi felt like she was living in a dream. She had escaped the sadness with Kofi and now was a queen, loved and admired. But this dream didn't last. Simbi and the king tried to have children, but no children came. The king wanted an heir, a prince or princess to continue his legacy. As months turned into years without a child, Simbi felt the king and the people's eyes on her change. 
The warmth faded, replaced by whispers and disappointment. And since she had been in the king's palace, Ralia had not come to see her. The king, once kind and gentle, grew distant. Simbi tried everything, prayed, visited healers, but nothing worked. Then, the day came when the king called her to his chamber. You are barren, he said, his voice cold. You cannot remain queen. Simbi's world crumbled. She was no longer the queen, no longer the king's wife. She had to leave the palace, leave the life she had come to know. With nowhere else to go, Simbi thought of Gogo and her daughters. Could they forgive her? Could she find a place with them again? With a heavy heart, Simbi returned to the village, hoping for a second chance. When she finally reached the village, her feet heavy with dread and hope, what she found broke her heart all over again. Gogo's house, once filled with the warmth of their family, had changed. Simbi's eyes caught a sight she never imagined. Ralia, her friend, her confidant, standing beside Gogo, her belly round with a child. For a moment, Simbi's world stopped. The betrayal, sharper than a knife, cut through her. Ralia, who had pushed her towards Kofi, was now taking her place. Simbi's heart ached, not just for the loss of her family, but for the trust she had placed in her friend. She wanted to scream, to ask why, but the words were lost in a sea of pain. As Simbi stood there, a shadow of her former self, Gogo noticed her. The look in his eyes was not one of anger or hate, but of deep sorrow. It was then that Simi learned the truth. Kofi, the man she had left her family for, was actually a friend of Gogo's, who had been away for a very long time, a fact unknown to her. This revelation added layers of betrayal and irony to her already heavy burden of regret. The man she believed would offer her a better life had been connected to her past in a way she could never have imagined. With no place in the home she once knew and no way to undo the choices she had made, Simbi found herself adrift. She settled on the outskirts of the village, living a life marred by solitude and regret. The vibrant, loving woman who once filled her home with laughter and warmth was now a shadow of her former self, haunted by the memories of what she had lost. Simbi's story became a somber lesson for the village, a tale of warning about the dangers of forsaking true love and family for the allure of wealth and comfort. It underscored a timeless wisdom, the true value of love and family, often only realized in their absence. Simbi learned, in the hardest way possible, that the grass is not always greener on the other side and that the riches of the heart far outweigh material wealth. Her life, once full of possibilities and joy, was now a testament to the moral lesson that resonates with all who knew her story. You don't know the value of what you have until you lose them. Simbi's journey from love to loss and her eventual living in the shadow of her decisions serve as a poignant reminder to cherish and hold dear the love and family we are blessed with. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If so, please like the video, share it with your family and friends, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more enchanting tales like this one. Goodbye.